All right, so it looks like my first project is going to be replacing the subfloor here at the front door. And then of course this front band is pretty much rotten. So uh, I'll probably have to cut that out. That's not really something I was expecting to do and I'm not necessarily excited about it either. So we'll figure out how to get that fixed and tear it out. We might end up down in the crawl space today, but both sides got water damage so we'll have to fix that because so i gotta get this door back in before the day is over all right guys i'll check back in with you here we go trying to get a measurement on anything in this house is almost impossible as a former framer i can tell you there was a lot of things done wrong so here i'm basically just trying to find the joist that way i can mark the dead center I'm gonna be cutting out a 12 inch strip of this plywood. So I wanna pull from the factory edge of the previous sheet of plywood and make my marks. And now I can make my mark for my straight line. I want the new piece of plywood to be square. However, the front one allowed my square to go that way. So I want to square it off from the line I made and then just trace that line back to make sure it's very accurate and very square. I do not want to cut this bigger than four foot. That's how big plywood is wide. You're probably thinking why is my Sawzall blade too so long? I don't have another one. This is the freshest one I have. I want to get the Sawzall blade as close to the bottom plate as possible. I'm just scared when I pull this baseboard off, I'm going to open another can of worms. this in a lot of the units where they just put little strips of drywall down at the bottoms to fur it out and I guess that's okay but um, you see what we're dealing with here. So. Alright so I'm going to cut this up against the plate right here. like some kind of half inch. I mean like true half inch. Maybe even more like five eighths. Okay. That's good to know. Okay, check this out. Is that bird or snake? Because I saw some snake skin down there. And it was not exciting. Alright, so we gotta figure we gotta replace that band right there too, by the way. So we'll have to figure out something for that. Okay. Alright, yeah, the band is pretty The band is pretty destroyed right there, so we'll have to 
and do something about that. All right, here we go. I think it's, yeah, it's pretty solid on this side. It's that side that's jacked up, so we'll figure something out for sure. job of screwing this plywood off so this one here is going to be kind of floating I see a nail there and I see a nail there but I'm going to fill it up with screws so that because this is sitting on a block and this is sitting on a block so these two should hold this floor up so I can cut them loose and replace that band up front That's sitting on the block a good four and a half inches, so I think we're safe with that. Now the reason I cut it back over here as opposed to cutting it over here where it's actually good, there's nothing sitting underneath this. So when I replace this, I want it sitting on that block and I want it sitting on that black and I'm gonna actually double it up and, and put a ledger on it, hopefully. And if not, then maybe a couple hangers. That's the route we're going right now, so let's see. Oops, no, we gotta cut this out of here. We're probably gonna have to use our oscillating tool with this one. tell you what, that's a pretty bad tool. That's a bad little tool. I'll tell you what, it went right through that 2 by 8 like nobody's business, so I'm pretty happy with that. The wall. Alright, let's see if we can figure out how to get this wall this beam up, huh? split in half so that's cool. Take it on two pieces with a half too, huh? Ah, 
nails. Loose now, guys. I'm gonna be taking it out three pieces, huh? We'll see. So I used to frame houses, which is why I'm not freaking out about this, but if, if you did not ever frame homes or you don't know how homes together, and this was your house, you may be like, Z, what are you doing to my house? Is it gonna fall? It's actually not gonna fall. See, this is sitting on this, though it's not the greatest. That's why I wanna put a double under there. So this wall sitting on there. The way this whole house was built is suspect in my opinion, but you know, starting with the two by eights, but it's on 12 inch center, so that makes it better. It's kind of like we built a shed, you know? <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna get this band measured up and maybe see if I got one underneath the house. If not, we'll have to run to Home Depot and get one and then we'll get it replaced. Maybe either put a ledger on there or a couple hangers, but I definitely want to double it so it's sitting up underneath the, this here and that over there. All right, here we go. said I wanted to double it up. I went ahead and tried to put the joist in here just to fit it. Like I said, it was a little taller. It was a little longer at the top. And it was short, kind of on an angle, and that's okay. But just trying to slide it down in here like that, you guys know, you gotta put a square block in a square block. It's not gonna work if you teeter totter it like that. So, by cutting these back another inch and a half, making it three inches, I'll be able to slide that beam down in there and pull it this way, and then slide it back and tuck it back in. And then, since I'm gonna be putting another one in there, I don't have to worry about it getting stuck because this is the only reason I can't just drop it in and go that way, see what I'm saying? Because that is there. But when I cut my next one, I can cut it a little bit longer so that it overlaps that, you know, making it solid, but it doesn't have to go all the way. That way I can get it in and slide it in and then slide it back. So that's the method we're gonna try and we'll let you know how it goes. I did buy some hangers and if we need them, we'll use them. But uh, right now we're gonna cut an inch and a half off of these. This is still sitting on this block right here, so we're all good to go. This one's still sitting half on the block. It's actually like about a quarter, but um, I think we'll be okay. I mean, it's hanging right now. All I'm doing is taking a, an inch and a half off of it. It's not like I'm cutting it out. I'll have to mark these on the other side. 
Most standard circular saws are an inch and a half from the blade to the outside of this fence right here. So I have enough room if I go that way, but you see we won't have enough room to go that way, so we'll have to redraw those. I'm gonna cut these down as far as it'll go, and then I'll finish it off with the sawzall. Don't forget to wear your safety gear. is the guard stuck on them. I actually cut my leg one time cutting an LVL. Cutting through like that and I was brought it back to admire my work and slid right through my leg. It was not a good time and that was not a good day either. So this one right here I think I'm just gonna have to handle it with a sawzall only because I don't think the door is there and whatever. So <clears throat> that's what we're gonna do. I have a cordless one here so let's see how it goes. Sitting, both sides are sitting on the block about eight to 10 inches, so that's beautiful. And then I'll just put the hangers on this one right here, and I'll try to squeeze the hanger on there if needed. Um, but um, if not, maybe throw a ledger up in there, but that, that might be tough too. So we'll figure it out. But anyway, I feel really good about that. That door ain't going nowhere. sitting underneath both sides of the wall, so I'm good with that. Okay. Now, we need to get these up, right? And we need to get them uh, supported, so we're going to try a couple things. If I could drive a toe screw through here and that'll hold it up. We'll try. Go ahead and get it started, you know. I think this is gonna work. Yeah, you can 
you get no more flush than that. Holy smokies. That's a good trick, so you got to take that and show your friends. Next time you can't get it flushed, and look here. It's almost got these flushed, too. I'm not even joking. So I imagine if I flush this one up, which it's literally, like, not very much at all, that it'll take care of this one as well. So, told you, since it was all screwed together, it all stayed up together. So that worked out nice. All right, so we're gonna try to screw this. Same way we did that. If you're gonna grab a handful of the 2x8's hangers, make sure they're all 2x8. Oh no, this one's too tough. Shit. Of course, these hangers, you just slide them up from the bottom right there. They have these little pegs right here, kind of like a built-in nail where you can slam it in, slam it up tight and slam it in to hold it for you. And then you can put your nail in. Try to fill up all the holes with nails and then uh, she in good shape. There's some on the side too to go into the joist. All right guys, so it looks like we got the wrong size hangers. They were all together, so I just grabbed three. And that one's perfect, but these are going to stick up too tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple toe screws in it to hold it, put the plywood on, and then tomorrow when we come back, I'll just grab some more on the way in and, and install them from underneath. You can do it from underneath. It's more of a pain in the butt. And over here on this side, we may have to use a uh, palm nailer, you like that, but this side we'll be able to get to with a hammer. Luckily, these are all done, so we're all good to go on that. All right, I'm gonna go cut some plywood and get this floor put back together. Here we go. Oh, hey guys, it didn't dawn on me that I didn't video this going in, but it wasn't too much of a hassle. I just had to get it in between the door here and then get it up underneath that door plate right there that literally is like disintegrating. So we did add some to it a little bit. I think it's going to be a lot better now. Well, gang, it got late on us, but we did get the door in and we got the trim on, see? We got a little bit late on me, so I had to hurry up and rush through things. The most importantly, I wanted to show you me getting the floor changed out so that I could get this door put back in, because last night I just had to put some plywood over it. You never know. People see that in there and think, oh, they're working on stuff. I wonder if they got tools in there, or people just want to come in and sleep. Who knows? But anyway, we got the door up, we'll be able to lock that thing tonight, and we got the trim on. I gotta do some drywall work around it because it was a little bit rough, but other than that, we're good to go on that. Hey, if you guys enjoyed today's video and it all brought you some kind of value, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. That definitely helps out the channel. And if you guys are into DIY projects like this and you wanna become part of the DIY family, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure to turn on the notification bell. That way YouTube will notify you when I put out the next video. And believe me, we got a lot coming. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this one and I hope to see you on the next one. And until next time, take care, stay safe. Peace.